This is a small topic, but I found that it's the little things when working with Office that make all of the difference between finishing your work quickly and efficiently and struggling with it. Uh, the topic of this video is going to be the context menu in the thumbnail pane in PowerPoint 2013. And that's a long way of saying if I select a slide in the thumbnail pane, right click it, and bring up a menu, this is the context menu. And I want to talk about a few of these options on that menu. Uh, the first three are common to many context menus in Windows and uh, Office. And I'm not going to discuss uh, cut, copy, and paste, other than to say that the shortcut keys for these commands are, are Control X for cut, Control C for copy, and Control V for paste. That is, hold down the Control key on your keyboard and press C to copy whatever is selected. I'm always amazed when I give workshops uh, with people who've even used computers for years who don't know those shortcut keys. Those are definitely the three most important shortcut keystrokes uh, there are. The commands I want to talk about are the ones down in the middle of this menu. New slide, duplicate slide, delete slide, add section, and way down at the bottom, hide slide. Okay. Now many of you will not use uh, the context menu to create new slides. You're far more likely to, uh, with a slide selected, uh, click on the new slide icon up on the ribbon. And if you uh, click the top half of this new slide icon, you'll get a new slide in the same layout as the slide that you have selected. If you click the bottom half of it, you'll get a choice of layouts uh, for the new slide that you can create. Okay, now you don't have that choice when you're using the context menu, uh, but uh, you just need to know that whatever layout the slide that you have selected is using, that's the layout that the new slide will get. Okay, I'm going to right click this slide again and choose new slide. And you see I have a new slide, which is the uh, default slide with a title and a generic content container on it. Okay, let me delete that slide. If I move down in my presentation here by scrolling the thumbnail pane and I right click on slide 13, choose new slide, I'll get a new slide based on a different layout. This is one that I added to the layout masters uh, for this particular presentation. But it's different than the one before. So when you right click and create new slide, it will be based on the slide that is currently selected. Okay, let me delete this slide I just made scroll back up to the top of my presentation and right click that slide again let's talk about duplicate slide now this is one that I found to be very useful in many presentations I've built um, with the slide selected I can choose duplicate slide and create another identical slide and uh, if you're not really experienced with PowerPoint you might be wondering why would I want to make a slide exactly like the one I've already made uh, but there are many occasions. Uh, think, for example, of a mathematical proof where you have, um, you're writing a formula on the slide and you've written one line and then you duplicate that, add another line, duplicate that, add another line, and so on. Uh, another use is like on this slide, a complex chart, for example, I could show one line of the chart representing maybe uh, cell phone sales and then another representing laptop sales and so on and put them in sequence and walk through and discuss each on a separate slide. So there are purposes for duplicating the slide. Um, right click and choose it off the context menu or uh, select the slide and here's the keyboard shortcut for this one. Hold down control and press D. Control D will duplicate the selected slide. Okay, now that also works with a group of selected slides. Let me select slides two through four here. Two, three, and four are selected. I'm holding down control and pressing D, and three new slides have been created. You see, I've duplicated those three slides. Let me delete those and move back up. Okay, so the keyboard shortcut, once again, for duplicating a slide is control D. Let's right click and get our menu up again. 
The next one I want to consider is Delete Slide. And you will use this contact menu to delete slides. Just right click and choose Delete. Now, if we realize we've made a mistake and really didn't want to delete, we can hold down Control and press Z on the keyboard to undo our last action. Um, some people use the uh, undo and redo arrows at the top. I find those um, less than useful though uh, because up on the on the quick access toolbar uh, I eliminate those usually from my quick access toolbar only uh, putting the commands up there I really do a, a lot of in different parts of the ribbon. Um, I prefer to use the keystroke shortcut which is control Z to undo. Uh, if you're wondering to redo is control Y. Okay so that's deleting. The, uh, the quick way to delete, of course, is to just select a slide and press the delete key on your keyboard. Okay, that's the quick way, and that's the way you'll probably use most often. I'm undoing that delete here, bringing it back. Uh, you can select a group of slides. I'm going to click on slide 2, come down to slide 10, hold down the shift key, and click. And I've selected all nine of these slides, as you can see, and now pressing the delete key, will delete them all. You see, let me undo that with Control Z. All right, so that's that's delete slide. Now I'm clicking. I'm right clicking again. The next command on the menu is Add Section. And uh, if you don't have a very long presentation, or if your presentations tend not to be long, uh, sections may not uh, do you much good. But if uh, you have a very long presentation, and I work in education, and I have to say that many faculty members uh, have very long presentations. <laughs> I mean, over a hundred slides. So it uh, it profits them to uh, divide their presentations up into sections. Let me show you how this works. I have slide two selected. I'm right clicking and I'm choosing add section. And then I have an untitled section. I right click that untitled section name and choose rename section and call it something. Let me type a title here. Okay, so now I have a section called the numbers and it has a little control next to it and when I click that little arrow it collapses the entire section, you see. I'm going to uncollapse that section. Let me run down here and make another section. I'll show you another way to do it too. If you click above a slide you'll put the insertion point between two slides then you can right click and choose add section and rename that section. Let me type a title. Okay let's do that once more for these final three slides here. Add a section and call this one vendors. Okay, now I have three sections and I can collapse that one, collapse that one, and collapse this one. And now when I decide I just want to work on the technology section of my presentation, I can open that one up and just work on these slides. See, it's a way of organizing and keeping your slides um, in, in front of you when you're using them. Also, you can take a, a slide section and drag it to another location and reorganize your presentation very quickly that way. Okay, so that's sections. The final um, command I want to talk about, let me right click and get that menu back up, is the hide slide command. Now you may be wondering why I've jumped over publish slides and uh, the reason is unless you have a SharePoint library, publishing slides to a common slide library uh, is no more useful than um, just saving the presentation to a shared folder. If you do have SharePoint, publishing the slides will publish it to an official SharePoint library and you can uh, store common slides there and check them out as you need them. It's a great idea. Not many people that I know of actually do it. Uh, these three commands here, layout, reset slide, and format background, are all uh, accessed more easily from the slide pane rather than the thumbnail pane. Although uh, they're here for you, you can change the layout of the selected slide and choose from the layouts that are possible from the slide masters. 
reset the slide. And this happens when you've added a lot of graphics or you've tried to remove the background of a graphic or somehow you've just made a hash of the slide you're working on. You can reset it to the way it was when you started. Or format the background. If I wanted the background of this slide to be a certain color or using a piece of artwork for it, I could do that here. I can also simply right click on the slide and choose format background, you see. So uh, let's get back to that last command and it's hide slide. Um, in the blog post that goes along with this video, I discuss why you would hide a slide. Basically it's to answer questions that you really don't want to take the time to discuss during your presentation, but that you think might come up after the presentation is over or even during the presentation. So it's a way to prepare yourself with information, charts, graphs, tables, figures, and so forth, that you can use to answer questions, but that you don't necessarily want to be part of your presentation. Okay, And the way it works is I will select Hide Slide, and you'll see the slide that was selected, or slides, because you can work on multiple slides this way, dimmed out here. And there'll be a diagonal line through the slide number. To unhide that slide, I can right click and click hide slide again to unhide it. Thanks for watching.